You know that tiny little chip in your phone, your SIM card? Most of us just think of it as a little piece of plastic that holds our phone number. It's what connects us to the network. Pretty simple, right? Just a bit of storage. But what if I told you that little chip is actually a powerful, independent computer? A computer that can run its own software, control parts of your phone, and track your location, all completely invisibly, without you ever knowing. Because that's not some sci-fi scenario, it's a reality. And we're not talking about a theoretical flaw here. This is a capability that governments in more than 30 countries have actively used to spy on people. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on an attack called Simjacker and how it turns the most trusted part of your phone into a silent spy. To really understand how this attack is even possible, we have to start by completely resetting what we think a SIM card is. See, a modern SIM isn't just a passive piece of plastic. It's an active microcomputer. Seriously, it has its own CPU to process information, its own RAM for temporary tasks, its own storage, and even its own tiny operating system, often built on a platform called Java Card. I mean, just look at this list. CPU, RAM, storage, and OS, even a virtual machine to run its own little apps, which are called applets. When you see it all laid out, it's clear. This thing was never just about storing your phone number. It was built from the ground up to execute code. And here's where it gets really crazy. This little computer can send what are called proactive commands straight to your phone's core hardware. And by the very standards that govern mobile phones, your phone, I don't care if it's the latest iPhone or Android, has no choice but to obey instantly. No permission pop-ups, no warnings. The SIM is the boss. So you're probably wondering, how does this hidden boss actually give its orders? Well, it uses a system that's built into every single phone, but is almost completely invisible to us. It's called the SIM Toolkit, or STK for short. And this isn't some hack. It's an official standard, defined by the same people who create the rules for 3G, 4G, and 5G. It was originally meant for carriers to offer basic services, but what it does in practice is turn your phone into a terminal that blindly executes commands sent by the SIM card. And we're not talking about small stuff here. The SIM can command your phone to send a text message that you'll never see in your message history. It can demand your exact location data. It can pull your phone's unique serial number, the IME. It can even force your browser to open a shady website or tell your phone to make a call, all without a single tap from you. Think of it like this. Your phone's operating system has all these high-tech locks and security guards at the front door. But the SIM toolkit, it operates in a secret tunnel that bypasses all of that and goes straight to the hardware. All the security features we count on, like app parishions and sandboxing, they are completely irrelevant here. Okay, so we've established the SIM is a secret computer with a back door into your phone. Now for the big question. How does that power get turned into a weapon? The weak link, the thing that cracks this whole system wide open, is a tiny applet hidden on millions of SIM cards called the S at Tit Browser. S-A-T. It was designed for your carrier to push you basic info, like your account balance, but it has a fatal flaw. It's designed to accept and execute instructions sent to it through a special, completely invisible SMS. So how does an attacker actually use this obscure little browser to spy on someone? Well, the process is, honestly, it's chillingly simple. Step one. The attacker sends a custom-built binary SMS to your phone. You don't get a notification. You see nothing. Step two. Your SIM card's SAT browser automatically opens this message and executes the commands inside. Step three, those commands tell the SIM to order your phone to get your location and your device ID. And finally, step four, the SIM bundles up that info and sends it back to the attacker using another silent SMS. It's a perfect zero-click attack. You do absolutely nothing and it's over. Now, it is crucial to understand what this special SMS is. It's not a text message with words that you or I could read. It's what's called a binary SMS. Think of it less like a letter and more like a key. It's pure machine code designed to be read directly by the software on the SIM card, completely bypassing your phone's messaging app. Okay, let's get technical for a minute. The payload, the code inside that message, looks something like this. To us, it's just a string of numbers and letters, but to the SIM, it's a very clear set of instructions. The byte 0xd1 says, hey, this is a proactive command. 0x10 is the order to provide local information, like your GPS coordinates. And 0x11 is the command to request the IMEI. See, it's not a message, it's a script. And all of this leads to the most unsettling part of this story. 
why the most sophisticated mobile operating systems in the world are utterly powerless to stop this. Just look at the difference here. Your phone's OS is built on a model of distrust. Every app is isolated in a sandbox. It has to ask your permission for everything. But the SIM toolkit, it's the exact opposite. It was built on a foundation of absolute trust. It gets direct hardware access, it never asks for permission, and it's totally invisible to the operating system. Here's the key. The commands never even go through the main OS. They're sent directly to the phone's modem, the baseband processor, which is like a separate little computer that handles the radio signals. The OS has no idea it's even happening. This design is a relic from 20 years ago, a time when no one imagined the SIM itself could be the attacker. Today, it's a massive, systemic blind spot. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, this sounds like an old problem. My new phone is safe, right? What about my fancy eSIM? Well, it's not quite that simple. This is very much an ongoing threat. Here's why. First off, there are millions of older physical SIM cards with that vulnerable S at T browser still out there. Second, carriers almost never update the software on SIMs, not like the OS updates you get every month. And about that eSIM? An eSIM is just a software version of a SIM card. It can be programmed with the exact same vulnerable software. Which brings us to the bottom line. You can't fix this. Your phone's manufacturer can't fix this. Only the mobile operators can. And it's important to know who's doing this. This isn't some kid in their basement. Launching a SIMjacker attack requires access to something called the SS7 network. Just think of SS7 as the private global backbone that all the phone companies use to talk to each other. Access is restricted, which means these attacks are launched by sophisticated players, government agencies, and private surveillance companies with deep pockets. So, if we can't protect ourselves, who can? Well, this brings us to the only place where a real solution can be implemented. Real protection has to happen on the network before the malicious message even gets to your phone. Operators can do a few things. They can set up firewalls to filter and block these kinds of binary SMS messages. They can remotely send a command to all their SIMs to disable the vulnerable SAT-T browser. And they can push firmware updates to newer SIMs to block these dangerous commands. The solutions exist, but they are entirely in the hands of the carriers. The security researchers who discovered SimJacker put it best. And this is really the one thing you need to take away from all this. I'm quoting them here. You cannot secure your SIM card. Only your operator can. No app you can download, no setting you can change, can fix a vulnerability that exists completely outside of your phone's control. In the end, SimJacker wasn't just another bug. It was a wake-up call. It exposed a deep architectural flaw in how our mobile networks are designed. It proved that the one little component we all thought was so simple and trustworthy was actually an independent computer built on a decades-old foundation of misplaced trust. And that leaves us with one final lingering question. We've just uncovered one hidden computer in your phone operating with its own secret rules. But what about the others? The modem, the Wi-Fi chip, the NFC payment controller? Your phone isn't one computer. It's a collection of them, each running its own firmware, each with its own potential secrets. The deeper you look, the more you realize you don't really know what's going on inside that device in your pocket. Stay curious.